So Pluto has a very long history. It goes back to 1930 when a very young man named Clyde Tombaugh was uh, searching for the ninth planet. He was hired by the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. And one night in January 1930, he took a set of images of one particular star field in the sky. And a couple nights later, he took a picture of that same star field. And when he compared them with a blink comparator, but he could blink back and forth between those two images. And he discovered that there was one little dot that was moving. It had moved uh, a certain distance between those two nights. And he realized that that's exactly the thing he was looking for. It was the discovery of the planet Pluto. That was 85 years ago. We're finally getting our first chance to actually get a closer look at that little dot that Clyde saw on that night in 1930. It's, uh, the New Horizons spacecraft is on its way there after a three billion mile journey that uh, started in 2006. It is, uh, we're basically right on Pluto's doorstep. We'll be reaching Pluto on July 14th and we'll have our first very, very close up look at that very, very distant and very mysterious world. Uh, since the time of the discovery, we've learned quite a bit about Pluto. We've learned that it has an atmosphere, a very thin atmosphere, but an atmosphere nonetheless. It has, uh, it has some very, very interesting, very, very subtle features that we can only barely make out in the best telescopes on, on Earth. We see that it has some very, very dark areas, some areas that are almost as dark as, as asphalt. We, it has some other very, very bright areas, as bright as snow. It has some orange areas as well. So you put that all together and you realize that this is not your typical sort of small cratered sphere, the kind of thing that we might expect for an asteroid or some other, uh, some other moon of some other distant world. This is a world in its own right. This is a place that has weather. This is a place that has climate. This is a place that has mountains and valleys and craters and all kinds of things that are just going to make it look very, very real and very, very vivid to us. In a certain way, it's going to look very familiar, I suspect. We'll see mountains and cliffs and things that we've seen on Earth, things or very similar things on Earth. We'll see fields that maybe look like they're covered with snow. Uh, but on the other hand, it's going to be a totally alien world with aspects that we have just never seen before. But I can just guarantee you that whatever it is that Pluto looks like, we're not going to be disappointed. It's going to be a big surprise and quite a, quite a beautiful object to behold. As we reach Pluto, we're actually reaching what we call the third zone of the solar system. The inner part of the solar system is dominated by four terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Uh, beyond that are the four giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So we're actually entering the third zone, which is the zone that's called the Kuiper Belt. Uh, it's actually a, a zone that is filled with a lot of objects that are a bit like Pluto. Some of them are quite a bit smaller. Some of them are almost as big or maybe even bigger. But these are very, very distant, very, very cold worlds, much smaller than any of the planets we talk about, which is one of the reasons why we now call Pluto a dwarf planet instead of a planet. But it is, uh, it is a zone of material that was maybe earlier in its history inside the solar system and got thrown out there. It may be formed there. We have a whole lot of uh, things we don't know about that region. But uh, Pluto was the first object to be discovered in the Kuiper Belt. Uh, almost by luck, by chance, because it just happened that this very fa fairly large Kuiper Belt object was actually just in the field of view that, uh, that Clyde that Tombaugh was looking at. He didn't look at the entire sky. He picked a region where he thought there might be a, a, a ninth planet. They were literally looking for the ninth planet. But their arguments for why the planet had to be there was were wrong. They, were, they believed that there had to be a ninth planet because they saw some peculiarities in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune, and they uh, hypothesized that there might be another planet out there. They looked and they found Pluto, but Pluto was in fact much too small to have been that object. So it was just dumb luck that Clyde Tombaugh in 1930 discovered the Kuiper Belt, probably decades before it would have otherwise been discovered, because it is a very, very small and very, very distant world. I'm actually an accidental Pluto scientist. Uh, my involvement with Pluto started in 2011 when I got some time on the Hubble Space Telescope to look for the rings of Pluto. Now that sounds like maybe a crazy idea, but uh, some years before that, two little moons called Nix and Hydra had been discovered. And what we know elsewhere in the solar system is that when you have small moons orbiting a planet or a dwarf planet, that sometimes clouds of dust come off of them and spread out to form a ring. So we got time on the telescope to look for the rings of Pluto, which by the way, we did not find. But in the process of doing those very, very long exposures on the Hubble telescope, 
we saw this extra little dot, which turned out to be the discovery of Kerberos, the fourth moon of Pluto. And then a year later, working with the New Horizons team, uh, we discovered Styx, the fifth moon of Pluto. So for me, someone who spent his career studying rings and satellites, suddenly Pluto becomes much more interesting because it's not just an object. It's an object surrounded by all the things that I'm used to studying. And uh, since that time, I have learned many interesting things about these moons. They all uh, sort of wobble in their orbits. One thing that's very unusual about the Pluto system is it has a very, very large moon called Charon. Charon is about half the size of Pluto, and the two orbit one another in the middle. They're kind of like a dumbbell, two ends of a dumbbell going around each other. So these four outer moons are orbiting two objects instead of one, and that creates all kinds of chaotic interactions, all kinds of very, very interesting dynamics that is uh, the topic that interests me most. Well, I feel very privileged to be, uh, to be alive at this moment in our history. Uh, Clyde Tombaugh saw a dot in the sky. He had no idea it was interesting, even at the time that they were launching the New Horizons spacecraft, when they knew it was interesting, they knew there was Pluto and they knew there was Charon, they didn't know it was at the center of this much bigger, much more complicated system. Every time we've looked closer at Pluto, we've been surprised. Something about it is different. It's always been the oddball planet, and I just uh, can't wait to see what we're going to discover in July.